China is now constructing a massive canal system. Even though it's just 135 kilometers long, it was designed to last for a century. The current rate of development suggests that it will be finished and operational by 2020. Sixth, China has only revealed little information on the project so far. But what we do know suggests it will cost more than 11 billion US and will cost more than $80 million used to build per kilometer. Several European engineers think it's a waste for China to spend so much money on an economically backward province like Kanji to construct an artificial canal. Just why, therefore, does China have to construct this fake can? What role does it play in the grand scheme of things? Authentic endeavors are the focus of this channel. Gushi's southernmost point is the Pinglo Canal. The canal's channel can hold up to 5,000 tons, and the canal's total length is set to be 135 kilometers. It is estimated that it will take 54 months to complete the canal. Mr. Sonnen of China wanted to construct a canal in one China a century ago. But on the one hand, China lacked the necessary infrastructure and advanced technology to do it. Yet there is not a robust demand for international commerce in Gucci, China. Yet, China has been surveying and designing the Gucci Canal since the 1950s. China now feels ready to start construction on the Pingwe Kamal after decades of planning. China will begin investing 72.73 billion yuan, about ETA's 5.8 billion, in Gucci China's economic development in March 2022. The estimated cost of building the Pinglo Canal is roughly $11 billion. While it may seem like a lot of money, Constructing a canal of 135 kilometers in length is really rather affordable. The Pinglo Canal's construction costs much above that of similar canals built in other nations. Several building locations in China's Gucci province must contend with mountains, hills, and valleys all at once. The high amount of rainfall in Gucci greatly complicates the building process. The canal's reservoir is 65 meters above sea level so that 5,000-ton ships may pass through it securely. In order to assist ships deal with the high drop, the canal will need to design and construct three cascade locks. As a result, the price tag on building the Pinglo Canal is much higher than it was before. For the economically depressed province of Quanti, the average cost of constructing a kilometer of canal is above $80 million, much exceeding the cost of building a kilometer of city subway at $30,000 per kilometer. The Pinglo Canal represents a significant financial commitment for this endeavor. Several individuals have different viewpoints. Clearly, China has more advanced railway technology. So why do we put so much money into constructing these fake canals? This is due to the fact that building canals is more in tune with Gucci province's development requirements than building railroad. Bulk goods on the one hand and railway transportation on the other make up a significant portion of the international trade demand in Gucci province. Transport fees are, nonetheless, Gucci province is situated near the coast in the northern section of the Baibo Gulf. When completed, the Pinglo Canal will drastically shorten travel times between Gucci province and the coast. Transporting commodities from Gucci province formerly required lengthy detours via neighboring provinces, with a ping-pong canal linking together the newest nodes. Gucci's ability to move goods quickly and cheaply would be considerably in hand. Gucci province's agricultural water demand is considerable, yet the province's rain is erratic. The Pinglo Canal is used to store water for use during droughts so that the riverside land may be irrigated. The Pinglo Can is a very challenging structure to construct. Chinese engineers have studied European building practices of the past to better guarantee the reliability of engineering technologies. European engineers are of the opinion there that the Pinglo Canal is unnecessary and have argued against its construction by China. They have the opinion that the demand for international commerce is low and the Chinese province of Gushi's economy is not developed sufficiently. The Chai province already has sufficient railroad infrastructure, so there is no need to invest an additional $11 billion on this man-made, made canal. But can we take this at face value? Gushi province in China has depended on the Exijung River and the Pearl River Interior Canal for a long time to convey the vast majority of its imported and exported commodities. As Gushi's rivers lack an outlet to the sea along the conventional inland waterway transit route, ships must navigate the Exije River and then the mouth of the Pearl River, both of which add significant costs to the transportation budget. 
Inland waterways are a relatively lengthy mode of transportation. Gushi is near the end of a long and complicated transportation route for several bulk goods. Also, as maritime traffic on the Yangtze River and Exijie River and Exijie River in China rises, customs processing efficiency is suffering. China wants to develop up new maritime channels along the coast of Gushi province to make it simpler for imported bulk commodities items to enter China. China's long-held commitment to developing the southwestern portion of the country makes the country's development of the Pinglo Canal an especially important strategic move. Due to its proximity to other Southeast Asian nations, Gucci province may serve as a hub from which to expand into the rest of the region. As the province of Gucci does not have easy access to the ocean, Xi's commodities commerce operates at a low level of efficiency. China considers the Pinglo Canal to be the quickest route from Gucci to the sea, since it can decrease the current distance by more than 560 kilometers. To maximize southwestern China's shipping potential, the Pinglo Canal connects directly to the Baibo Gulf seaport, which in turn connects many seaports in ASEAN or around the world. Goods from inland areas in western China can be transported to Gucci by rail and then shipped out to sea through the Ping Blue Canal Channel. When the Ping Lu Canal finally opens for business, international commerce in China's Cochin province will become much more streamlined. At the same time, transportation costs for freight may be lowered even more. In reality, man, made canals have a tremendous effect on economic growth. The opening of a crucial occult waterway in the United States might hasten things significantly. New York is rapidly becoming into a major financial hub. Plans for the Erie Canal were initiated in New York as early as 1817. Over $7 million US dollars were invested at the time by New York. The Erie Canal is a waterway in the United States that is 584 kilometers long and runs from the Atlantic to the Mississippi rivers in the Midwest. People at the time often mistook this for a lack of understanding. Yet, the gloomy canal was able to recoup its initial investment expenses in only 10 years. The canal's spooky design has cut the price of shipping products between towns on the river by 90. The ideal scenario for growth is unquestionably the availability of low-cost and quick marine transport. In response to their concerns, it was determined that the spooky waterway in question was, in fact, a man-made canal with significant monetary worth. There is historical precedence for several nations to gain access to maritime lanes by constructing man-made canal. That's also why China invested so much in constructing the Pinig Lei Canal for the future. China's exports and import needs will rise in tandem with the expansion of the Belt and Road. As a fresh connection between the ocean and the interior, the Pinglai Canal will be crucial. China's Gushi province is expanding its Pinglo Can into the interior to spur economic growth 